Voters have spoken, and KD is the leader in the clubhouse for next season's MVP, finishing ahead of LeBron James. Dave, would you agree that KD is the MVP favorite heading into next season? Yeah, he's the best player on the best team in basketball. He's coming off uh, a championship, so he has that kind of under his belt now. He knows his team. He knows the system that they run. He's healthy. He's in his athletic prime. But he is the guy. He, he should be lined up for a second MVP of his career. Yeah, I think he's probably the favorite, but I also wonder, like, what did Russell Westbrook winning the MVP last year due to the voting mentality. The, the guy wasn't the best player on the best team, and he certainly wasn't from a 50-win team. So I wonder if the mentality for voters is moving towards more of the story mm -hmm. and the novelty, novelty aspect rather than just best player on the best team. Because I think actually Kawhi Leonard going into next season might be the novelty story uh, for MVP. Because Russell Westbrook, we know what he's got in the triple doubles. We saw Kevin Durant win an MVP already. Steph's already got an MVP. LeBron's already got an MVP. But that guy Kawhi Leonard, I think he might be right there with KD. Going. See, this is, this is my thing when it comes to KD. I don't think the voters are ever going to vote for a Warrior as long as those guys play together, KD and, and Steph Curry. I think the, the – because they're always going to say, oh, but you, you had help, right? Right. And the MVP, when we talk about that narrative, it's always about he did it by himself, right? LeBron did it by himself mm -hmm. even though he has good team, teammates. And Russell Westbrook last year, he did it by himself. James Harden, another – front runner he did it by himself Durant and Curry are always going to cannibalize each other I yeah. think when it comes to that and so for me it really comes down to LeBron James for and who we all expect to be on a mission if Kyrie's traded absolutely yeah. even more so right the thing or, about the thing about LeBron, the thing about LeBron though is like is he going to be in cruise control during the regular season you he know, wasn't it, last year I mean he took games off right and he didn't play his best defense during the regular season, but the numbers were there. Statistically, right. He's the best statistics of, yeah, of career his career. Yeah, career high right? in assists, career high in rebounds. And it's uh, going to be a bad Eastern Conference. So oh. He's going to pile up a lot of wins if he wants it. I just don't know if he wants it enough because I think all he cares about is getting the title at this point. But if he doesn't think he can get the title, <laughs> that's, then, that's a good then point. the fifth MVP would be a nice little cherry. So, so we alluded to a little bit. Uh, none of the surprise was that the reigning MVP, Russell Westbrook, did not place in the top five. He's finished sixth. So, Tom, I know you didn't vote for him last season. Yeah, I didn't. Do you think his chances of repeating this year are better? I, I, don't think, I don't think he should be sixth here. I think he should be much higher here ahead higher. of Giannis. Yes, because why do we think that he's not going to get triple doubles next year? Last year, before well, Kevin Durant left, he averaged 10 assists per game. Right. You know, I don't think that's going away. And the only difference is, like, Paul George – is coming to the team, I don't think it's going to stop him from getting triple double. So this idea that Russell Westbrook isn't even in the top five after being the, the winner last year, I find that very hard to believe. But if, we, if we're talking about the story is the thing, if the team improves in Oklahoma City next year, Russell won't get credit for it. Paul right. George will get credit Absolutely. for it. So that kind of cancels that out. And also, he already hit that statistical mark of a yeah. triple double. If he does it again, is that so impressive? I know, but it just speaks to, I mean, what are we voting for? Because, like, we reward a team, historically we rewarded players for playing on good teams. Right. The best teams always had the MVPs. Right. But, and yet when Russell Westbrook gets better players and they presumably win more games, that hurts his MVP case. I mean, because I don't think he can put up, like Dave said, he's not going to be able to put up the gaudy, I mean, they're still going to look good, but yeah. my point that I was telling the producers earlier uh, is if Russell Westbrook last year averaged 39 and 9, He's not I the, know, he's right? not the MVP. So, yeah, that's that's so, so ridiculous. That is the truth of it. Right. So we can say, oh, he's great. He played hard every year. That's all cool. And he, he could have even broken the triple-double record that he did with 41 uh, in a season. But if he averages 39-9, and nine, he's not the MVP. It, to me, it's an, it's an admission that last year Russell Westbrook winning the MVP was more about the novelty and the story right. than it was this guy is the best player in the NBA. Right. And, and to your point about Giannis, to me, first of all, Giannis took a huge leap last year. Yep. And, when you, again, we talk about the Eastern Conference. It's going to be so much weaker. Milwaukee becomes a top three team in the conference, wins 50-some-odd games, and he has another step forward. Doesn't have to be elite, but 28 points and all around and guarding all five positions. Maybe that's the cool story, right? Yeah, but that's probably like the Isaiah Thomas story of last year. Sure. Because then you say, okay, he's doing well for the Celtics, but they're in the East. And right. ultimately it will sway back to, I think, a Western Conference player or LeBron. The, the other name that's interesting on that list is is James Harden not in the top three. Do you think no. he's happy about that? He's given basically in our eyes, he's essentially giving up the MVP award now that they had it's Chris, Chris Paul. Ball. Ca ca cannibalization. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cannibalization, we mentioned a little bit earlier before last season, Steph Curry was the back-to-back -back reigning MVP. Now he's finishing seventh in the forecast, just behind Russell Westbrook. Our friend Jay Adande thinks that Curry's window to win MVP might be closed. 
Donde wrote, quote, when you factor in Curry's sixth place finish in the 2016-17 MVP results, it's becoming clear that he's no longer considered one of the very best players in the league. Most valuable player is a narrative-driven award, and it's easier to remain the best player than it is to be the best story. There is no new territory for Curry to explore. This is the part where I vehemently disagree with Adonde. Hmm. Only in the sense that I don't think that he's no longer considered one of the best players. Much in the same way, the last couple of years, Dave, it's not like we, we don't consider LeBron James to right. be one of the best players. It's just... We've done that. We've done right? that. That's what it is. Well, one of the things that's interesting to me is he almost averaged a triple-double in the finals last year. Yes, he oh, did. So the idea, like, he was, he was the leading rebounder for the mm -hmm. team. He had, uh, I think, for the whole series, he had more rebounds than Tristan Thompson, maybe. This yeah. is new territory. Like, right. if he's able to add this another element to his game, I feel like that is the uncharted territory that Jay Adani says, you know, I don't think he can get there. But if he adds the triple-doubles and becoming more of a complete rebounder and, and assist right. guy, that's a different story. The Golden State, to their credit for what they do as an organization, they don't chase statistical achievements. Right. So I don't see him, say he was close to averaging triple-double or yeah. something like that, I don't think they're going to sublimate other guys' games to try to help pursue that. I could see him being finals MVP, though. I, I yeah. think it's kind of baffling to think this team's won two championships, been to three finals, and it's Andre Iguodala and Kevin Durant. Now, Kevin Durant, one of the best yeah. players yeah. of all time, but the fact that Steph hasn't won one, like you could get a Joe Dumars, Isaiah Thomas situation where they, he adds a, a finals MVP. The only way that I see Steph Curry win the MVP next year is if Kevin Durant gets hurt because last year when he got hurt, they right. went on a 13 game win streak. Right. That's, and it was with Steph Curry taking right. the. That's the only it. way. The, the only way is if it reverses back to a situation like, okay, that's the best player on the best team. But as long as, I, again, Curry and yep. Durant playing at the same time, neither of them are going to win because people are always going to say, yeah, but you got. You got that guy. You got him on your side.